every day I have someone ask me what type of art or picture can you 3D engrave in a laser? There is only one 3D image that you can, or 3D type of file, that you can engrave with a laser. And that is a grayscale image. But it has to be a particular type of grayscale image, which is called a height map. Now, if you Google 3D relief or grayscale image, you will be presented with pictures like this. But you cannot engrave these, or they don't come out very well at all. Now, I'll show you a height map. Um, and they're quite easy to distinguish. Uh, this one here, this one here. Um, we'll pull this one up actually. Okay, so if you look at this, it looks quite ghosty looking. Okay, so it's lighter here in the front and sort of fades out at the back, so it's very ghosty looking. There's a special reason for that because it's a special file. This black and white 3D image is broken up into 256 different levels of grey. So the lighter the grey, the further forward the picture is. The darker the grey, like the, the wings back here, the further back in the picture it is. That's how the laser distinguishes in what depth to actually cut that picture. So the picture needs to be a particular file and this is a grayscale height map relief picture. These are the only type that will successfully engrave with a laser. So we'll, we'll take a picture that I've chosen now and put it into Lightburn and we'll set it up in there and engrave it. So I'm going to bring in a file. So I'm going to import um, from my desktop this file. Uh, it's already selected so I don't have to select it again and I want to resize it to my material and I know I want to go to 220 millimeters enter and then I want to bring it into the middle and down to the front uh, I like to bring it down to the front here and I t remove the front panel from the Thunder Laser and uh, I can video through that front um, entrance or even down through the front glass. So that's where I prefer to have it. Okay, now setting up the parameters is... Look, I'm going to give you some parameters to go by that uh, I have proved over the years. Um, so we need to set this to, okay, set it to a grayscale image. And you notice this changes. Um, now within this image here, especially from uh, this black to the white, um, light burn is broken up that area to there's actually 256 different shades there of gray so what we're going to do now this is from the last 3d that i did uh, last week actually so and that was a finishing cut so what i do is set the maximum power setting to 
95. Uh, and the minimum power of 1% uh, of the output being uh, 100 watts. Now I know that uh, if you set this to 1%, the laser actually doesn't fire. Uh, you know, it's so weak that um, weaker setting that is that the laser does actually drop out. But we put it to 2%, and it will fire. So in what I'm actually telling light or getting light burn to do is at the whitest white, I don't want the laser to fire. That's what I'm doing with these settings. Um, I could put this up to 100%, but I find if I, <laughs> being a 100 watt uh, laser, if you put it up to 100%, even running at 600 millimeters per, per second. Um, I'll just get a tape a minute. I'm going to tell you what that is in inches. Uh, let me see. Yes, well, it's pretty well two foot per second of scan uh, speed. So it's, you know, th this laser will actually go up to a thousand. Uh, but that's, you do, uh, if you run it at a thousand, you just lose a little bit of clarity with it. So um, I run it at 600 and uh, I find that's okay. Um, scan lines one zero point one is fine, even though if you if you if you run a scan line on a piece of paper at low power or in a piece of uh, MDF or something and measure that, okay, it'll come out to nearly two point zero point two of a millimeter, but as you speed up the scan speed, that line will actually, uh, uh, you know, and do the same line on a piece of uh, uh, MDF or something, and measure it. You'll find, oh, it's gone down to 0 0.1. The reason for that is the laser, uh, the laser beam, even though it's focused onto the material, in a very narrow beam. Okay, the end of the beam is cone shape. So it's only the tip of the cone shape gets chance to damage the wood because that's what you're doing. You're damaging the material or vaporizing it. Okay, and I'll go into the technical side of um, lasers and why they do what they do and how they do it in later videos. So um, at this setting this is um, 254 dpi dots per inch. Okay so we're going to call that good and now we're going to send it to the laser. I'm very happy with those figures. Uh, I've done quite a bit of uh, 3D um, engraving with the Nova 35 and uh, I know that those power settings work in pine. Now pine and maple are probably the best materials to do this sort of job in. Um, you can use other types of wood um, but you will find that the head of the wood like oak and things like that uh, you can do it but you've got to knock the power back quite a bit um, because it will just burn it uh, you know burn it black um, so I have found the best results is, is pine and maple and uh, a, a wood called hue and pine actually which is only grown here in Tasmania. Um, so we'll set this up and I just want to take the front of the laser off the, the front panel here uh, so I have a, a full airflow through the laser um, and it then doesn't tend to to sort of uh, blow any muck down onto the uh, laser work um, but it'll extract it out through the back. Um, and another thing too with 
3D engraving with a laser, you don't do it in one shot. Um, you layer the engraving. Um, this will probably take, I want to go quite deep, it will take off a, between uh, one millimeter and one and a half millimeters, approximately sixteenth of an inch um, per pass. Uh, so I'll probably run this same file about um, five or six times. Uh, and the very last time I run it, I will knock the power level right back down to approximately 50%. Uh, and we'll use that as a cleaning pass. Uh, you still remove material. Um, but uh, it, it cleans it more than 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 anything. Um, you still have to clean it under water after that as well. And I quite like using the two-inch lens, uh, which is supplied with the uh, laser, because the operational focus then. Uh, you still have a very, very focused beam over a probably something between an 8 or 9 millimeter range. So when you focus on your top of your wood, you know you're still going to be in focus 8 millimeter deep into the material. So um, that's why it's quite good for um, 3D engraving. If you use the um, inch and a half inch lens uh, that's only focused for a, about a quarter of an inch five millimeter five to six millimeter uh, then it goes out of focus too much that you can't um, get a good result when you go in that deep uh, and, and of course if you want to do a uh, a deep engraving, which is going to be about eight, nine millimeters deep, uh, you have to focus, you, you have to pause and then take the table up so you, you're back in focus again. Uh, you, you know, and you can do that, and that's fine. So, uh, what we'll do now is um, I'll set this up, put the work in. And you've got to sort of lock it in with magnets uh, because you really do not want that piece of work to move uh, because then you'll it'll make a mess. <laughs> 